So I got my first credit card when I was just about 19 years old. And I was very excited about getting started um, on my whole credit journey. And that lasted about one minute because in one minute I maxed out the entire credit card. And I did that by buying myself a brand new Apple MacBook Pro. Now I thought that basically I'm gonna pay this off no problem. The truth is it was a lot harder than I actually thought it was. Now thankfully for me, I read a lot of books, I watch a lot of videos, and I figured out basically three ways to pay off my maxed out credit card without getting myself into more debt and without having to pay the credit card a bunch of money in interest. In this video, I'm going to teach it to you guys, okay? Now, the very first thing is do me a favor and smash the like button and let's get right into it. Now, the very first way is going to be by moving the debt. It's the easiest way and the step that saves you a lot of money and also saves you a lot of stress. Now, you ever heard about the saying, Rob Peter to pay Paul? Basically saying, if I owe my friend Peter $100, I'm just going to rob Paul $100 and pay Peter and now I owe Paul right? And you might say, well, what's the difference? You just switch your debt from one person to another person. The truth is, yeah, it's true. But how is this helpful? Well, the answer is, or the one word is basically the terms, the terms of the loan. Now you can have one credit card. For example, you owe $5,000 on one credit card. They charge you every single month as a minimum payment about a hundred dollars. And all of that is basically being put towards interest. That sucks because that's over a thousand dollars you're paying every single year. And it's just an interest. However, what if I found you somebody that's willing to lend you $5,000 and not charge you an ounce of interest for a year, for two years, for three years? Does it make sense to move the debt from the person charging you interest to the person that's not going to charge you interest? Obviously, it does because automatically it saves you a bunch of money. But how can you do this with a credit card? The answer is going to be there is something called a balance transfer credit card. And these credit cards are basically used as tools to move balances from one debt to the credit card. I say one debt because it doesn't only work with credit cards. You can have, for example, a medical bill, a bill you owe anywhere basically, and have the debt transferred from that over to the balance transfer card. Now, right now, there's one by city also one by Bank of America, and also a lot of offers you can look up online just by typing in balance transfer credit cards promotions. And if you go to City, they're offering you 18 months to pay off that debt interest-free. Now you might say, Tommy, there's no way I'm going to be able to pay off all this money I owe in about 18 months. It's too short of a time. The truth is that may be the case, but I will still do it because it's gonna save you a lot of money and in interest. That's the whole point. So even if you're not done paying it in 18 months, if it saves you a hundred bucks a month in 18 months, it saves you just about $1,800. Now, what's the catch? The catch is these people are betting that you're not gonna be able to pay off the balance and you're going to be stuck paying them interest. Second catch is to move the balance from your current debt to that credit card, they're gonna charge you a 3% fee on your full balance that you're actually transferring over. So if you owe $5,000, 3% of that is about 150 bucks. Tell me, is that a bad deal? The answer is, of course not. Right now you're paying $100 every single month. It's basically like about a month and a half worth of interest and it's gonna save you in total about $1,800. So of course, I would actually go ahead and do it. Now, there's something else, a big problem I want you to avoid. When you transfer the debt from one credit card to the next, the credit card is going to have an empty balance now. A lot of people feel tempted to now spend that money on that card now because they have a card without any debt anymore. And now they have double the debt. Very stupid. Don't do that. Don't do that to buy yourself a gold chain, to buy yourself a new phone, don't do it. What I recommend is to save you from the temptation is close the old credit card. Now, 
Another problem you might face is, Tommy, what if they approve me, but not for the full balance? The answer is that's also okay. Because once you run the numbers, it is still effectively going to be saving you a lot more money. Now, the second thing you can actually do is, it's going to be using the snowball method or the avalanche method. Now in this video, I only have time to go over one of the methods and I'm going to be choosing the snowball method. However, if you want to watch a video comparing both of them, I have a video like that on YouTube. You can search it up, you can click it, you can watch it. The video is good. Just be warned that back then, I used to do a lot more screaming in my videos for entertainment purposes. The information is still solid. You'll still have a good time watching it, but be warned. I do scream a lot in those older videos. Just put down the volume, don't wear any headphones, and you'll be just fine. Now, what exactly is the snowball method? The snowball method is literally what it sounds like. It's a snowball that keeps building up and building up and building up. And how does that kind of starts up? It starts up little by little. And the idea is what you want to do is pay off the debt with the lowest balance first and then build up to the debt with the highest balance. Now, why is this method so popular? The idea is it builds momentum. When you have a lot of debt and you have a large balance and you owe a lot of money, it can almost feel like you're drowning or you're being stepped on, or you're like Goku, training under 100 times gravity. If you know what I mean, hit the like button, okay? But it's stressful, that's the whole idea. So the way you actually get started is not worrying about the highest debt you have, the most money you owe, no. Just start small. And what that's going to do is, it's going to feel, and you're actually doing it by the way, it's going to feel like you're actually making progress. So let's say for example, I owe Paul $100. I owe Peter $105 and I owe Chase about $1,000. The idea is I'm going to organize it exactly like that. Paul, Peter, and then Chase because that's how the smallest balance actually works. Now Tommy, what do I do with the other balances? Do I stop paying them? The idea is of course not. If you do that, you're going to be facing penalties on interest obviously, and late fees, you don't want that, and also reports to your credit score saying you're not paying on time. It's going to ruin you, at least like credit score wise, credit score wise. Forgot to speak English for a second. Credit score wise, forget it, okay? But it's going to ruin your credit score. And what you actually wanna do is, you wanna pay the minimum on each and single debt. That way, you don't have to worry about, for example, having any late fees or having bad reports in your credit score. But the rest of your money, you actually wanna use it to, towards the debt with the lowest balance. That way you pay that one off. Once you're done, move on to the next one and the next one and so on and so on. Tommy, what if I don't have any extra money once I'm done paying the minimums? The answer is you're going to have to get a budget, and basically tying things up around the house and cut a lot of bills out. That way you have extra money to pay towards that small debt. Now, if that's still not enough or fast enough for you, I recommend you get, for example, a side hustle and use that extra money to pay the debt with the lowest balance and then move on further and further down. It is sacrifice, it is a lot of work, but it is definitely worth it. Now, the third option is going to be let the debt go into collections. If you want to be debt free quickly, just stop paying your credit cards. It'll go into collections. Once it's in collections, you negotiate the debt with collections. Instead of paying a dollar for dollar for your debt, you pay like 50 cents or maybe 30 cents. If you a thousand, you pay 300 and then you pay collections. You get it from, you get it wiped out from your credit score and then boom, you're good to go. Yeah. It works. Now, obviously, I don't want you to do that because if you do that, it is going to also ruin your credit score. It also says a lot about your character and it's also something wrong to actually do. However, if you have debt that's already in collections, I do recommend you negotiate because what my friend said is true. Collections buys your debt for nickels on the dollar. If you owe $100, they will buy that debt for five cents or for $5 basically, and then try to charge you the full $100. So if you offer them 20 bucks, 50 bucks, they're still gonna be making a huge profit, okay? So you should negotiate with collections, but you should not let your debts go into collections to avoid paying the full balance because morally, ethically, characterly, 
it is wrong and you should not do that. You should try to pay off your debts in a timely manner. So the idea is not to get your debts going to collections. So what is the third method here? It's going to be pay it off with your savings. I know a lot of people, including myself, where I owed a lot of money and I had money, but I didn't want to use my savings. I didn't want to use my investments. I didn't really want to use anything to pay that debt off because I felt like if I use my savings as money, I'm not going to have invested. If I use my savings, I feel like I'm wasting it on debt. The truth is debt is very expensive. It can cost you like 18%. 24%. So the faster you're done paying this thing off is going to benefit you properly. On top of that, I know people that say, well, I have my investments making me, for example, 10%. This debt is only 5%. So I just have that pay that. The truth is that puts on a lot of stress on you. In reality, it may just be better to pay it off. That's exactly what I did. I chose to just pay things off and not worry about all that leverage because if things don't go as well as you actually plan in your head, you'll still be owing that money. There's no way around that. Now guys, those are three ways to pay off your debt when it's actually fully maxed out. I hope this video actually helps you. Do me a favor and smash the like button on top of that. Also subscribe because I want this video to do well. That way more people learn about this. See you guys next time. Peace.